educating people on what they can do to naturally boost their immune system is the safest, the most effective, and the least costly way to protect our health. Dr. Melser, this is new information for a lot of us. What are the alternatives that we need to know to boost our immune system? You know, everybody needs to know some very fundamentals about wellness for themselves, for their loved ones and their families. So here's what I recommend you go about doing to treat and protect yourself from the swine flu. Number one, the area of self-awareness. You have to become realize that you are responsible for your own health. It's not the government, it's not the vaccines, it's not the insurance company, it's not the pharmaceutical companies, but it's you that's responsible for your own well-being. So just the concept, just the belief that you can impact the, the flu. In other words, the virus needs a host, it needs a person that we talked about to detangle. So you have an ability to fight back. So people need to know this, number one, their belief system and their attitude are crucial factors. I mean, we know, for example, people that smile and laugh have a stronger immune system. So happy, healthy living, you need to know happy, healthy living is a very powerful way to fight off the flu. Number two, nutritionally. There are certain foods you need to know which cause the flu, which aggravate the flu, certain foods which protect you from the flu. Let me tell you what you have to avoid because that's really where the problem comes up. So commonly, the four or five foods I need you to know that typically are present in, two, in excess or are present when people catch the flu are the following. Number one, dairy products, milk products, eggs, refined white flours, sweets. This is what I want people to avoid, you see? Eggs, milk, butter, cheeses, dairy products, sweets, and white flour. They produce mucus. When mucus is produced, it's like a stagnant pond. If you ever look at a stagnant pond, you see the mosquitoes and the bugs. When the filters in your system are clogged, when you're backed up, your lymph system's backed up, it invites the growth of bacteria and viruses. So therefore, avoid the foods that I call mucus-forming foods. Now, what is it that you eat? Well, I want everybody every day to have some fresh fruit. So at least one fresh fruit salad a day, emphasizing the citrus fruits, which are high in vitamin C and vitamin A. Number two, I want people to have one leafy green salad a day, emphasizing dark green vegetables, such as romaine, lettuce, and broccoli. I want people every day to eat some foods that are high in antioxidants, which are your fresh fruits and vegetables. Thirdly, a very simple thing, a green drink. For example, spirulina, wheatgrass, you know, uh, a green tea extract. You know, these have been shown to have antioxidants which can fight off the flu. So enough fruits and vegetables, a fruit salad every day, a green salad every day, a green drink every day. And there are some key supplements that I would recommend people take to protect themselves against the virus, the H1N1 virus. Now here's what they are. Number one, I think very importantly, it's important to take the herb astragalus. It's an antiviral. Number two, high doses of vitamin C. We've shown that vitamin C, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000 milligrams a day is virucidal. Interestingly enough, glutathione. Glutathione is a supplement, 50 milligrams twice a day, which is antiviral qualities. And very commonly, curcumin or turmeric is an herb that people use to spice their food. It has antioxidants, it has anti-inflammatory powers, and has been shown to be antiviral. So those are the things, curcumin, glutathione, high doses of vitamin C, and astragalus I recommend for all folks out there that are looking to protect themselves against the flu. And exercise boosts the immune system. So everybody listening out there, I would encourage them to have some type of regular exercise routine. And then stress management. We all know stress impairs the immune system. So how do you go about managing stress? What do you do to reduce stress? Exercise, meditation, prayer, creative self-expression, you know, more time with family and loved ones, more time for fun, more time for laughter. In other words, a balanced lifestyle. Dr. Melzer, you've given us some invaluable information and insights about how we can boost our immune system. We're going to be having this new vaccine coming out shortly. How effective is it, and are there some risks involved? Well, you know, the safety, the effectiveness, and the side effects of the vaccines do concern me. You know, vaccination is not a perfect science. And again, this is why it's so critically important to make the human body, the human being, the first line of defense. Now, I'm not saying vaccinations can't be helpful, but here's the, here's the thing. First of all, they're not really protective against new strains. They kind of have a backward look. In other words, the vaccines are designed for the virus that was circulating in April. We do not have long-term studies. So, I mean, as far as safety is concerned, everybody's telling us it's safe, but it's not based on long-term studies. When you overuse a vaccine on antiviral, you take the risk of creating a superbug, a supervirus, like when you overuse antibiotics, that could be resistant to antivirals. And the other thing is back in 1976, when President Ford declared a swine flu epidemic, and he ordered 40 million Americans vaccinated, all of a sudden this Guillain-Barre syndrome, a very serious paralyzing neurological disorder started to show up. So, you know, we're not really sure what side effects are. We're not really sure how safe it is. But my point is, we can't just rely on that. The information here is to rely on yourself, your thinking, your lifestyle, your choices, your eating habits, your stress levels. That's how you're gonna make a huge impact on the flu. 
That's where I have to take the energy, is to empower the people, not the virus. Dr. Melser, with all of that having been said, do you recommend this vaccine? Here's what I think, Noel. I think that the vaccination is appropriate for folks that have compromised immune systems. So those folks in our society that have chronic illness, chronic diabetes, heart failure, lung failure, kidney failure, leukemia, AIDS, cancers, etc. I think those folks need to be vaccinated. But I think the rest of the population needs to take it upon themselves to boost their immune system, to empower themselves, not the virus, through lifestyle changes, through positive thinking, through more happy, healthy living, through better eating habits, through more active living, through more creative living. You see, I think the first line of defense, again, is the person. But I do recommend for those with compromised immune systems, I think it's the wisest thing and the most prudent thing to give the vaccination to high-risk people, to high-risk pregnancies, and to individuals, especially young people or old people that are high-risk for illness. Any final thoughts for us? You know, when it comes to the swine flu, I want everybody to remember that it takes two to tango. It's not just about the virus, it's about the individual's immune system, their immune power, their internal military. And there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can do as an individual to boost your immune system. Your thinking, your eating, your activity levels, your level of stress, all these things affect your immune system. So for example, don't overlook the mind-body connection. Just as the mind can cause stress to the body, we all know about psychosomatic illness, I urge all of you to join together in creating health as a value and creating psychosomatic health through proper thinking, proper living, and the wellness habits that engender wellness. Dr. Melser, thank you so much for giving us a lot of innovative insights into these issues. Thank you for being our guest. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Noel. It's been a pleasure to be here.